Yo, yo, yo. That's right. That's right. I am back. I am back. Always coming back. I know y'all miss me. I'm not going for too long, though. Not going for too long at all, man. Uh, you know what, though? You know what I did forget? I forgot to ask my my uh, my guest today. I forgot how to pronounce her name. But I'll ask her that in a minute, though. So what's going on, guys? I am back with another podcast interview for you today. This young lady. Man. Mm. What can I say about her, man? I, I, I could say I could say a lot. <laughs> I could say a lot about this young lady. Um, yeah. Instead of saying a lot, I am going to show you what this young lady is about. So check it out. My worst fear, my worst nightmare came to pass. I get pulled over, racially profiled, and even uh, you know sexually profiled as a as a man. That that officer thought I was a man. So going through you know two double jeopardies. You know what I'm saying? Two different double jeopardies. Two two different double whammies. And one in one sitting, you know what I'm saying, was was the ultimate hurt to me. It was it was man, I was pissed. I just put it like that. I was pissed. So Well we we about to get into it. We we about to find out. Like, officer, what's going on, you know? We we about to find out what's what's going on and why this young lady was pissed. And why the officer thought she was a man. I mean, with the pretty eyes and the and the, and the amount of piercings, I, I don't think she was a man. So let me go ahead and introduce you guys to my guest today. Her name is, pronounce your name, because I don't want to be. Valencia Carwell. Valencia. <laughs> Valencia Carwell. Valencia Carwell. Carwell. Valencia. That is an awesome name. See? Thank you. I, I'd rather... I, I'd rather for you to uh, I'd rather for you to say the name because I, I would have came I would have came at all different levels on your name I would have called you like <laughs> Val yeah like that so it's it's Valencia we could have rocked with that one too yes sir we could have went with Val V A oh, okay Bye. okay so you know in order for me not to not to beat your name up I'll probably just say Val go ahead and Val okay. for short for Valentine. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> they call me that here too in Chicago. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, Val, you you um, you're you're a three year driver out here. You've been uh, rocking out in these uh in these trucking streets for three years. Says here that you started off with Swift. Are you still with Swift? I am no longer with Swift. Ah, but you've been there. You've been with Swift for three years, though. I was with Swift for, uh, for three years, and I'm with Arc Express now. It's been a year with them now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so I've been hit... out here for four. Oh, so for four years, okay. Still, yeah. still coming, still coming up fast. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. All right. So for the people that don't know who you are, introduce yourself and let them know where you come from. I am Valencia Carwell. I am 27 years old. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Um, been driving for like you said four years. Um, I'm not just a truck driver. I was a nurse before this. Um, I'm writing a book. Um, I'm um, in college to make my book into a movie and a play. I'm, I'm doing a lot of things right now, trying to get my YouTube off the ground. So yeah. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Jack of all trades over here. Did uh did yes, did, did trucking well? Let's let's go back a little bit. You know, you say you're from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what, what was, what was it like for a young Val back in, uh, back in the Chicago streets? Um, in the beginning of my childhood, it was, it was dope. I'm not going to lie. Everything was financially straight. My mother always kept a job. Um, but after a while, yeah, we, we reached the, the, the poverty levels and it got hard for us. And I was in the street life, me, my brothers, like, we we ran the streets and got into the guns and all of that bad stuff, the selling drugs. Man. I just wanted different. I wanted to live to see another day, and I wanted to be the change I wanted to see. So I started with myself, looked in the mirror, didn't like the person I was becoming, and I just got up and changed. Okay, that's what's up. So you was a little gangster back in the day, huh? 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what was what, so? Uh, you 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 had to get you you had to change because you knew you you knew that the drug game wasn't gonna wasn't gonna last too long for you, right? You you knew it was gonna exactly. You knew it was only gonna be either one or two things, either dead or in jail, right? Exactly. So the drug game for a female, how what what, what was it like for a female being in the drug game back in the day? I mean, I was really one of those people where I was uh, sneaking in and getting my brother drugs and stuff. Well, you know, I have some of my homies that want me to get some stuff off and, and I sell it at school and I needed money for stuff. And if I if I needed some money for stuff, I knew I had people that would look out for me. So they uh, give me some, some stuff, I'd get it off, whatever. Oh, but okay. it got to the point where in school, oh, man, uh, you know, when you when people start hearing about your name and you're doing something, somebody mm-hmm. going to tell. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I was like, no, I'm not looking over my shoulders. And somebody, one of the uh, one of the assistant uh, principals came and said, I know you got this. If you don't get rid of it, I'm going to uh, have you expelled or whatever. But they didn't ever go to my parents or nothing because my mom was up there all the time. But they didn't say nothing. Like, they just told me what they wanted me to do. And I I moved around. <laughs> mm. So I you ain't was, no trouble. So you was uh so you was a little so you was a little trapper. Uh yeah. Yeah, you had the uh you had the school on fleet, but as you said before, you know, you you your name get out there, you know, and then you got some you know, you got some haters, you know, they mm-hmm. they eventually gonna come and uh come and shut you down. Um other than the fact that you said you looked in the mirror, you know, and, and reevaluated yourself, was you was you in any any real danger as far as you know, like facing jail or anything like that? Um, I almost got kidnapped. Um, uh, it was just a lot of stuff. Got yeah, one of my teeth knocked out. It was a lot of stuff going on. Uh, a lot of people got hurt, and um, I just. I had to get out of that mentality. Me and all my brothers broke away and got ourselves together around the same time. Okay, okay. We moved around and we all we we all got our ourselves together. Some of them are electrical engineers. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, some of them just really out here hustling to get their rap career off the ground. Like mm-hmm. really focused on that mm-hmm. music, making beats and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Some of us we truck drivers. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. It's good that it's good that all. How many brothers? Just just you as the only girl in a in a sea of brothers, or you got any sisters? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or? <laughs> I got I got stepsisters. Oh, okay. You got a stepsister. Okay. What about so? How many yeah. brothers you got? Blood brothers. I got two blood brothers, but uh, my my brother's best friends are my brothers too. Because whenever I need them, they wrote. Oh, okay, so, the, so I, I got a lot of votes. So you ride or die, pretty much. Yeah, ride, ride or die, Most family. Definitely. Most definitely. Oh, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Ride or die, family, on that one, man. I'll give you give you a bomb drop for that one, because you know not too many, <laughs> not too many, not too many family and friends ride or die for each other. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, sometimes they be on some ill shit and all like that. But it's cool that that to see that you and your brothers knew what time it was and y'all decided to change your ways so later on you you said you was a nurse so how how long you was how long you was a nurse was you like a nurse for a nursing home you was yeah i was doing hospice oh yeah okay so hospice yeah that was hard uh, yeah, I, I can imagine, uh, you know, hospice, If for you guys that don't know, a lot of you don't, but, you know, hospice is like, is where you get prepared to go home, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you, you, you was in, you was in that for three years, and I, I know yeah. that was kind of, I know that was kind of hard to, to deal with. Can you, uh, can you let us know how that, how that experience was for you? Oh man, that was a humbling experience for me. That that really changed my life. I met some older people that taught me some valuable lessons and they just made me see life in a different aspect and that made me go harder for myself and, and figure out my dreams and my goals. And once I left there I didn't look back. I didn't I didn't look back at all and I said, I wanted to be a truck driver. I used to tell my mom I was gonna drive for Swift. I used to point at their truck. 
um, you know, when I was younger. And I was like, I'm about to do it for real now. I was like, I, I'm not looking for nobody to root me on or nothing like that. Like, I got the courage and the abilities now. Hold up. I went hold on up. Wait, wait. Made it happen. Oh, hold up, man. Hold up. Wait a minute. Stop the tape right quick. I'm, I'm going to have to hit you off. Right. You, you seen a swift truck. And yeah, when I was younger. When you was younger, out of all the mm-hmm. trucks that's be rolling out here, you seen a Swift truck. I always truck. saw them a lot. <laughs> I always saw them a lot. And with that, and with that said, you said you wanted to be a truck driver because you seen a Swift truck. I always wanted to drive big trucks. I always loved big trucks. All right, now hold on. Now it, n- this ain't no this ain't no shots fired or nothing like that. You know what I'm no, saying? No, no, no. Look, it look, ain't hey, it, it ain't no shots fired to a swift. It ain't it ain't it ain't no sw- it ain't no shots fired to a swift. You know what I'm saying? They uh mm-hmm. they still you know they still a good company. You know what I'm saying? They, they got they some. They not the best, but they not the worst. Right. I say that. Right. 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 So that's that's where you that's where you started with as far as getting your CDL. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. So you so you took that inspiration, you saw their trucks, you wanted to get into the game. You you called them up, you went through the school. You got your mm-hmm. license, you got your license through them? Yes. Oh, okay. And and it says here you was only with them for 3 years. So what was your experience? What was your 3 year experience with them? Okay, um, as soon as I finished school, um, my mentor, which is my boss's brother, my mentor, um, he trained me or whatever, and uh, he wanted he wanted to introduce me to his brother, and I was like, okay, it was they were giving me an opportunity. I was like, okay, I ran with it. Okay. So that they were on operators or whatever. So I'm like, man, I want to you know do this. I I don't want to be through the company. You know what I'm saying? I want to eat. Right. So. I went on the operator out the gate. I never really was like with Swift, with Swift. So people, when people think that, oh, you was, oh, you was a Swift guy to the heart, and that's really not what it is. Like I just drove their freight. Okay. But I was never really a part of the company anymore. Oh, uh, okay. I got so you bought out their company. Okay, so wait. <laughs> My boss bought me out. <laughs> okay, so you, so you was, you was pulling their freight. You went through the school, yeah. but you went, mm-hmm. you, you drove independent for owner operator yeah and i still do right now today i'm still with the same man right now today okay okay so you would so so you attend so you decide to go 1099 instead of the uh, w2 yes, okay yes, so sir. how how long has how long has this young man been in uh been in the game He's been in the game over twenty years. Twenty years, and he saw some great black man. He saw something in you, huh? Yes, he did. And okay. when he shook my hand, yes, he did. Okay, that's what's up. That's a blessing right there, man. That's a blessing to to get uh to get to get uh off, you know, off off of Swift and right into that. But let me ask you this though, when. Mm-hmm. You you say you still with the you still with the young man to this day, um, mm-hmm. is he? You you know like when they try when people try to, uh, like when companies try to you know verify your your driving experience, will he be able to mm-hmm. do that if if you decide to yes. break from him? Yes, uh huh. He has it. This is literally a, his own company. He has it branded and everything. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Because sometimes yeah, he's all legit. Sometimes companies like you know, like big, medium, big and medium companies, not so much of a small company, but big and medium companies, mm-hmm. they they want they try to verify your experience, and then all of a sudden they can't because the small mm-hmm. guy you 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 drove for a small guy. So, so mm-hmm. so yeah, man. All right, so um. So, uh, what's what's a little bit about yourself? You got a uh, you 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 writing a book. The name of the book, mm-hmm. uh, the name of the book that you're working on is a thin line between love and gay. Uh, yes, I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of leaning. I'm, I'm kind of leaning. <laughs> and it, you know, I'm sure people gonna people gonna ask, so I'll ask for them. Uh, mm-hmm. Your your sexuality. I'm a lesbian. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. 
what's 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 that life? What's that life like being being a lesbian truck driver? It's hard. Oh man, it's 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 very hard. We misunderstood. We just um we treated differently, kind of ridiculed at times. Um I am I am I will definitely say I'm number one to say like I've had it rough. When I first got out here, people were so nice and, and helpful. Mm -hmm. And I can see the transition over time of how evil people's gotten, you know, people have gotten and how, man, since Trump has been in been in office and stuff, how evil like the 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 transition of of people have gotten like everybody's angry it don't matter what it is it it can be over your sexuality or your your race anything like they just evil they find a way to be spiteful and vindictive towards you so i mean being a lesbian period like we get it hard so when we step out here on these trucks and they feel like we not entitled to this lifestyle this lifestyle is for a man I mean, mm. hey, we're going to have it hard either way. But I'm up for the task. I've been doing it four years. Okay. If they're trying to get me off the road, good luck. <laughs> now, you know, there's now, now, you know, there's been, there, there has been some ridicule, but there is some, there is some lesbian couples out here that, that are doing the damn thing, i.e., Nick and yes. Carla. Are you familiar with them? Yeah, I definitely, yes. Yeah. See them all the time. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they dope. I definitely you know, watch them. They definitely, they they definitely showing the game that you know being beautiful, being black, being being black women, mm-hmm. and being a couple. They showing that you know, hey, if you guys can do it, we can do it too. So shout out, yeah, exactly. shout out to them, shout out to you. You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. for for Thank coming you. out here and and you know, regardless of, of regardless of what the people think, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's your sexuality. Uh, my crazy question is, <laughs> I'm about I'm about hey, to be I, I'm about to be stupid with you. My my crazy question is, mm-hmm. who 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 wears the pants in the relationship? I'm a dominant and masculine woman. Okay. I, I I really take on the role of really taking care of things. But I guess now the the lady that I'm talking to now, I'll say that we both can do it 50-50. So it's dope now. Like, before, I've always had to be the one to make sure everything is okay. So now I don't have to do everything alone anymore. Oh, okay. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, let's get back on topic, man. We, man, we get... Woo! So, <laughs> so many questions. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so many questions. But let's get back on topic. This book that, you, uh, that you're writing, what, what is... Spe- mm-hmm. what, what, what you... Um, what uh inspire you to make uh the, to to write a book? Um, I started writing this book as a poem. Um, I had to find the outlet. I was sexually abused twice growing up. Um, by um my stepfather for years and by my cousin. Oh, I'm and, sorry um, to hear that. I, oh, trust me, I'm fine. <laughs> trust mm-hmm. me, I'm fine. I hear um, you. so with that, um, I just I, it started as a poem and. I started transitioning into a, into a story and it just grew. Now I got like 26 chapters for my book. And, uh, wow. I just, I started speaking about it. I started speaking my truth and it started like getting recognition. So I leaked the book. I leaked the first four chapters of the book. So being, and a, it went viral. So, so being an author, uh, a truck driver, an author, uh, mm-hmm. a lesbian out here, man, I, I'm in, I'm in awe. I'm in awe right now, you know. Uh, so mm-hmm. being being the author, how how do you get your inspirations? Was you know what I'm saying? I just I just feed off of life and everything that comes in into my grasp. The point I I watch movies, uh, TV shows, TV series. Um, I watch people like talking to people. Those just stepping stones through life. Like I really listen to people. I love to hear people out. Okay, and okay. that's how I I get you know to be one with myself and dig deep into you know all my troubles and all my sorrows that made me the strong woman I am today. I'll say that. So you so you you got you you say how many chapters you got? Twenty six. Twenty six right now. It's how, supposed to be like a a three part book right now. So so when so you say you're working on uh, getting it published. You you who you working with in order in in order to get that going. 
Um, some people were telling me to go through like Amazon, but I just got uh, a message from somebody recently about another place to publish through because um, they publish through everybody. Everybody on the mainstream will see you. Mm-hmm. So I got to, um, I have to find a name of that for you, but I still got a, little, a couple of tweaks. That's what I'm in school for. I still got a couple of tweaks to the book that I want to do. Like I want to make sure every chapter is like the first one. Okay. So until I get it to that point, I'm not I'm not dropping it. Like I know it's dope. Everybody telling me it's dope and I leaked it just to, to prove that fact to myself, but mm-hmm. I'm not ready yet. Okay. You okay. gotta be ready for the world to hear you and for the world to see you. Okay, okay. And you 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 feel that they're not yet? I mean They ain't they ain't ready for me. It ain't even so much that I'm not ready for them. They ain't ready for me yet. Like oh, you say they ain't ready for because you. Because these yet. chapters <laughs> these chapters real in depth, like <laughs> They they are very in depth. Even like the, the sexual abuse, like they get real in depth with like scenes and, and details. So now I don't now I I, I don't want to offend you with my next question, but uh, no no look, don't feel bad about anything you want to ask. I'm okay, open. okay, okay. Now when you was uh, when you was sexually assaulted, uh, when you was young, mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. that? Was was that the segue for you to be the woman that you are today, as far as as no. far as your sexuality goes? <laughs> no, I already knew that question. Look, nope. Oh, okay. Um, I'm, I'm gonna break it down to you just like this. I did a live on this recently. Um, I put um, people said I was gay because I was touched. Right. But in reality, I got touched because I was gay. What? If you know, you know. If you get it, you get it. Okay. <laughs> you want me to say it again to so you? Okay. Okay. So they in. The, okay. Let me let me see that now. Excuse my excuse my my dumbness, but mm-hmm. they 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 tried to knock the gay out of you. That's what they tried to do. Pretty much. Yep. Yeah. You know I mean, if you people know since I was a little girl. You you are you are what you are. I mean, you know. Yeah, I couldn't change it. You know, and, and I tried they, they, to pray it away when I got older because I saw it, it caused a lot of trouble in my life, and I couldn't. So I started to be who I was. Like I didn't come out till I was nineteen. Okay. My nineteenth okay. birthday. Okay. Okay. So a lot of that's you know, how hard it is. Well, <laughs> I mean, I got now. Don't get me wrong. I got to you know honestly, like you know, I'm. I'm 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 down with it, any and everything. I mean, if you're mm-hmm. if if it, it you you are who you are, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I I I just <laughs> I guess you could say, you know, the stupid part of me is like I I never understood like damn. Mm-hmm. All these beautiful women out here and they got they significant others as women. Like mm-hmm. what the hell did these niggas do, man? Like <laughs> Let me elaborate on it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I want to elaborate on it. I think it's dope um, that you even said this because I hear it a lot. So mm-hmm. pretty much I've I, uh, dated being as a cover up until I came out when I was 19. Right. I've had some dope men in my life. I, I didn't have sex and I only had sex with one. Mm-hmm. And after that I came out, I'm like, oh, hell no, this ain't me. You know what I'm saying? And he wasn't a bad person. The experience wasn't bad, but I knew then, you know what I'm saying, okay. that that wasn't for me. And and I, you know, I led him on at that point, and I couldn't do it no more. I was, I, I was, you know, not being true to myself. But I've had some dope men willing to give me the world, and, and been, they've been great to me. It was me. Like, I was born this way. You can't change who you are. When people say like, oh, I'm uh delivered and all of this stuff, it's still inside of you. You're born with it. It's it's I, I feel like it's a genetic v- thing sometimes. Okay, okay, now hold, now it's v, a lot of v, things, it's a lot v, of things cooked up. V, V, now I I get you. I get what you're saying and a lot of people a lot of people will agree with you on that. But then there mm-hmm. there are some naysayers that's like, how are you how are you born that way? I mean, how do you know at the conception of life that mm-hmm. you're gonna lo- that you're gonna end up liking women instead of men? So you know, like at a, you, you really can't tell as a baby, though, right? <laughs> yeah. 
So when did you start? When when you say you came out of the closet at age nineteen, when did uh-huh. you start having, you know, knowing that you start having feelings for other women? I t- I tell people in my book. I literally wrote a chapter about this. Uh, when it started, I was in pre K. Um, I saw this sex scene of a male and a female, and uh, it was this girl who I used to go to the bathroom when she was my little humping buddy, like. It was not that, you know, I, wa- I wanted to, like, I-, I just couldn't be with a man. It was just it was just simple to me. Like, I wanted to be with a woman. I knew since then. Like, she was the person I used to go with, like, all the time. Like, I just knew. Like, all the feelings was there. I never looked at a man the way I looked at a woman. And I never will, I promise you. Like, okay. it was, it was a, 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 I guess, a, a science to it. I don't know. It was. It's a lot of things concocted into one, and I wish I could really give you my brain and, and give you exactly how I see it. I got you. So you can understand. I got you. But I knew all my life. I, I did. All right. So a thin line between love and gay. Um, but you, you working on, uh, you, you want to make sure that everything is right with that. You want to turn it yep. into a movie and into a play. You have any ideas on, on the characters, on the, on the actors or the characters you wanted uh, in the movie? I tell uh, I tell people all the time I'm giving back to my people. I want my people to to have a, a a revenue. I want my people to always be straight. I'm not gonna give them a handout, but I give you a job. Okay, that's what's up. That's I stand what's firm up. on that. That's what's up. Have you ever thought about? I mean, you know, being that you you know that you are an author now. Have you have you thought mm-hmm. about reaching out to uh, Tyler Perry's people because you know Tyler Perry like to put people on. And I've done it. Done Tyler Perry, Oprah, uh, all of the big names. Oh, no okay. replies. It, has anybody so now, replied? See, I got to do it on my own. No, no, no replies. What? No replies. No way. No, none of them. Not one. Not one. Not, no not, replies. Not, not one. Not not a person from their camp. Nothing. No replies. I promise you. I wouldn't lie to you. Oh my God. I would think that at least Tyler Perry, because you know Tyler Perry, <laughs> you know does the you know does the Medea things. So you know, mm-hmm. uh, I, I would imagine somebody from his camp would have at least reached out to you and said, "Hey, thank you," or anything like that. Has okay, so those are the big names. Has has any other smaller yeah. has any other smaller smaller names reached out to you? Have anybody reached out? I got out some to people them. reaching out from from all corners, have, wanting me to do all types of uh, types of different things. Not even just with my book, just you know, I, I'm like pretty much in a in a sense like an activist for you know sexual abuse women, sexually abused women, and everything. So I get you know reached out to about a lot of different opportunities. Okay, okay. So it's that's not just, just even the book, like, and that's just not even that's all that's to me. So. I mean, I don't just lean towards the book when I'm, you know, talking about myself or things I want to um, embark upon. Okay. But, I mean, I stopped looking for the validation from the Tyler Perry's and the Oprah's. And I said, I'm going to self-publish myself and I'm going to brand myself in. People are going to know my name because at the end of the day, I have the, you know, the power to make or break my situation. Exactly. Not them. That's, that's, that's because they error going to end too. That's, that's exactly they, on they point. They error will end. That's exactly on point. And it's a, you know, sometimes, sometimes it, it, it takes the will of a person to, you know, to get out there and, and, and do it themselves. And then a lot, yes. and then when, when, the bit names start looking at you and start saying things like, Oh, well, she's this and she's that and all like that. Well, I you reached out to him. You you yep, I, I you reached well, out to time. him. You reached out to him. You didn't say nothing back. So now that I got this <laughs> Right. So now that I got this attitude and this swagger, oh, it's a mm-hmm. problem to you now. Yep. You can't you you can't see you can't see a young entrepreneur coming up the way I'm coming up because I'm not coming up the way you want me to come up. I mean, if you wanted if if they wanted that, they should have reached out to you, right? Yep. 
I say this, though, let me tell you this. Mm -hmm. You know what a lot of people look at and they judge me and they don't realize what all this took for Lindsay Carwell. My piercings, my tattoos, they, they make that define me as a person. And they don't know how dope I am in real life. And I wish that the world would stop being so jaded in that sense. It's is I you know I I'm I'm with you on that I am with you on that but unfortunately the way the world is it it is it's never it's never gonna it's never gonna be messed up so uh you you're a truck driver you was driving one day through Indiana and uh, mm -hmm. you got pulled over by this uh by this one time uh take us take us back to that to that uh, fateful day what what went down. Okay, um, that day, um, earlier that night, I'll say, my boss asked me to pick up one of his workers because his truck uh, got hit by somebody and it jackknifed. Mm -hmm. So I picked him up from the shop. So I had to wait. He had to drive. Um, he had to drive to the rest of the load or, uh, to, or I had to drive or he had to drive. It was one of those two to uh, drop the load off or whatever and then in the morning, he would drive himself to the terminal with me. So that's what I thought. So they later then say, like, he was supposed to drive himself home. I didn't know where home is, but I'm going out of my way. I'm going to take you home, and I'm going to be late, you know, for my own situation to get you where you need to be at home mm -hmm. when somebody could have got you from the terminal and I could have been on my way. So I ended up in a racist town, and I knew it was racist because I didn't see nobody. There was a little truck stop, and... Uh, it was this guy parked right next to me. And when I looked over at him, the face he made, you know, was of total disgust. Mm -hmm. And I said, let me hurry up and get out of here. I locked my doors. I checked my uh, GPS to uh, put in to go to the terminal, which was in Gary, Indiana. And, uh, man, I was looking at the road. It was like you could see a tumbleweed fly across the road. Mm -hmm. I was like, it's time to go. Um, the truck stop literally only fitted four cars. So as I started driving down Illinois 26, because that's where I was at, um, I saw an officer. He was sitting in the lot. Now, I'm, I'm steady slowing down and everything because I'm on live. I'm slowing down and everything. I'm telling him, like, man, I wish I could hurry up and get through this town. But they got these little speed traps and everything. I was like, I'm just so ready to get out of here. So I look over. It's the officer. He's sitting in the lot. He don't think I see him. But I see him. Mm -hmm. And so I, I kept driving, doing what I was doing. And I was talking to the people, telling them, like, please just talk to me on the way home. I had like a, a flash, like I, my life flashed mm -hmm. and I just knew something was wrong. And I was telling them, I was telling them that, but the, the, some of the video got cut because they got my Facebook taken. Like the police got my Facebook taken and everything. Well, so, wait, um, explain, explain that. How, how did it, what did the police stop the live feed or, or what? No, they got my Facebook like literally taken, like, so I couldn't have the video. They thought I didn't record the video so I could have it. So they got it taken before they, well, at, like they got it taken after I recorded it on my phone. I'm lost. Because it was through, <laughs> let me explain it. Okay. The live was through a group that I'm in called Snatching Pride on Facebook. Okay. So I had to record it through my phone. Like I had to play it again and record it through my phone. Right. But I had to get as much as I could and hurry up. Because they had sent, like, they had got mad because that video went viral in that group. Oh. And everybody was sharing it. Okay, so there's, so there is a, so is the video, is the video of the altercation still available? It's, um, it's on my YouTube. I recorded it. It's on my YouTube. But the video through Facebook is gone. They took my whole entire Facebook. This is my new Facebook I have now. I have uh, a totally different Facebook now. Okay. I rebranded myself. <laughs> okay. So the, the altercation video is not available, but the video that yeah, I the came original, the, yeah. the video I came across you talking about it, that's the one everybody know. That's what we're talking about right no, now. No. The one of the actual incident is literally still up there. The the first video I ever posted on YouTube was of that situation. Got like fifteen thousand views. Okay, okay. What's what's the name of your YouTube channel again? It's, it's, called, it's just my regular name, Valencia Carwell. All right. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Continue while I'm looking that up. Well, pretty much um, I looked at the uh, the officer or whatever, and I kept going. 
And uh, later down the line, like five, ten minutes later, I noticed that he was behind me. Now, he didn't put on his sirens at first. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, why is he, like, right here? But it was cars between us. So I guess um, he jumped in front of them, and he ended up right behind me or something like that because it was cars in between us. Um, pretty much he hid himself, uh, I guess, for a while. I don't know how to explain it. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't know he was right on my trailer for a while. But it was like, it wasn't like I was hiding anything from him. But pretty much... He just got to, like, putting his siren on out of nowhere. And I instantly started, you know, breaking. But he got irate with me, and he jumped in front of me and stomped the brakes because I guess I was stopping too slow. But mm -hmm. I was shifting down. I was shifting down because the speed limit had went back up to 55. So mm -hmm. I was shifting down. So he stomped in front of me. I had to uh, jump the, um, the shifter out of gear with the clutch and just pull over. So... As I'm pulling over, he's yelling at me, get out of the car right now, get out of the fucking car right now. And I'm like, no. Is all this on video? Like, that's not how you approach somebody. Hmm? Is, all, is all of that is on video? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Hold on for a second. Let me see if... T town of Rossville. Look, look at him right there. I got... oh, okay, okay. Here it is. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on right quick. Hold on. Um, it says, I'm trying to read town of, what the fuck is this? Town of, I can't even read the side because he, he keep turning himself to the, town of Rossville. Look, look at him right there. I got his ass on video. So what was the reason why he pulled you over in the first place? He said I was I'm not getting out, Robert. Well, like, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, okay, hold on right he quick. Said I was oh. Hold on right quick. He, and he's okay. asking you to get out. He's motioning to you to get out. And to, if you go all the way to the beginning, you'll see where he just came flying off the handle and walking towards the truck, telling me okay. I better get out the damn truck. Right no okay, hold on. Here. Okay, hold on right quick. Hold on, here we go. Die. Oh, okay, is that, that's the siren. Okay. What the fuck is he doing? He said he had it on for a minute and I wouldn't stop. You heard the siren just flip on right now. Now, look, the police want to pull me off. Now, y'all see this shit. Don't you see me trying to get over, sir? What the fuck? Now, watch this. I'm going to leave y'all on here. These people is fucking sick. Now, watch this. I might, have to, I might have to take the music yeah. out. No, I'm not getting out. No, I'm not. I'm trying to stop you for over a mile. If I can't hear you, then I can't hear you. I have music on. I'm not getting out. I'm not getting out. I'm not getting out. I need your alerts. Better get the fuck out of here. Okay, 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 okay. So <laughs> he, so he, so he said you, what, what was the reason why he got, why he got out? And came to you that way. That's what I'm still trying to figure out right now today. Like, so he, I didn't do anything wrong. I was not speeding. Okay, but that that's what he initially said that you was speeding, right? He said he said he was trying to stop me for over a mile. That's what he said. He never told me why he was trying to stop me until after the fact, until he, he literally was just disrespecting me and yelling at me. He had to concoct the story to even like have a reason to get me out of the truck, but that still wasn't probable cause to get me out of a truck. Okay. And that's a man. I'm a woman. You didn't have no woman officer to make me get out of the truck. Okay. Okay. So, so all, all of this, you're still driving or let me, let me rephrase that. You still pulling freight for Swift, right? No. I was driving for Swift at that at, at that point in time. They got me fired. They sent the video in to Swift and lied and said that I didn't. And Swift was like, oh, I didn't report my ticket, which I did. I reported the ticket to my boss because it was on the video that I got a ticket. And I told my boss they gave me a ticket for doing 20 over the speed limit, which I wasn't because my truck doesn't go over. Uh, it doesn't go over 70. So how was I doing 20 over the speed limit of 55? Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's, you, you you sent me in your in your bio, you said that mm -hmm. that Swift fired you because yeah. because of the altercation with 
with with this Indiana cop. So yes. So you know, I you know, I was kind of I was kind of confused for a little bit because you said in the beginning that you was pulling Swift's freight, but you was driving the young man's truck that you're driving for now. Right, I still drive for uh for him right now. Okay, okay, so so I just don't drive for Swift. I drive for Arca Express now. Okay, but you, okay, so you dri- so so oh wait wait okay I I think I get hold on okay. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me let me get let me get my mind right. All right, because <laughs> you was you was contracted as a lease driver driving the young man's truck through Swift. And, Correct. Okay. See, I thought that you was you was driving for him pulling Swift's freight. But in other words, you was still driving. You was just driving his truck and you was contracted as a lease driver on the Swift, right? Is is that a proper way of doing it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's the proper way of saying it, but uh, I'm with Father to Transportation and I was driving uh, Swift's freight. I just say that. That's a you know, to to sum it up. Okay. And I'm still with Father to Transportation, and now I drive Arc Express's freight. Okay, 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 okay. So you get so you get uh, with the new company, you know, you 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 get dispatched through them though, right? Yes. Okay, just like you got dispatched through Swift. Right. Okay. This is true. So Swift uh uh safety department. Got a hold of the video, of course. Uh, of Pretty cor- much. Of of course, they gonna, you know, they they safety department sees that you're videoing while driving, uh, pretty much, and that's that's probably might have been grounds for termination right then and there. Uh, they never mentioned that, and I I never touched the phone. I never touched the phone. The phone was up and mounted. Uh, before I even drove off. Okay, 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 okay. The thing they said was I never reported the ticket, but the police sent that video in to them out of spite. Okay, 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 okay. All right, so, <laughs> yeah. So so Swift just, uh, they, they, they called you up and just said that your services is no longer needed pretty much. Yeah, and they said if I beat the case because they added extra charges onto me after the video went viral. They said that if I beat the case, then I can uh, be uh, be put, you know, reinstated, pretty much. What What was the other charges? Um, all three of the charges were doing twenty over the speed limit, okay. failure to identify myself, okay. resisting arrest with a commercial motor vehicle, and that's a felony. And they were trying to give me two years in jail for that. Wow. So you yep. still so you still here driving for Arctic. So what was the what was the resolution of all that? I took a plea deal because I didn't want to come back down there no more. Because they told me, pretty much my lawyer told me, I'm just I'm gonna be plain and simple with this. My lawyer told me the best deal you're gonna get is that that um that felony drop down to a misdemeanor for uh your racial status. That's what he told me. Wow. Yeah. All right, so Ark, like so they got their own rules here. So, so you you just pretty much had to pay a fine, pretty much. Yeah, lawyer mm-hmm. fees and stuff like that. Yeah. All right. So Ark Express that you at right now? They um uh, mm-hmm. they 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 brought you on still, regardless of of the situation that you was in at Swift. Yeah, they have a uh, forgiveness program over there. They dope people. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. So, uh, did you get out of the truck? <laughs> no, I never did. That's why they. That's why they did all of that. They they pride was hurt. I wasn't giving out to give myself to them. Okay, okay. So they, that was men. Those were were three men. Oh hell no! Oh no! Three okay. men. Would you get out for three men? Nah, I mean you know you being a woman and you felt you know you felt. <laughs> You felt some kind of way, but 
it 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 really could have got ugly. I mean, they could have. It could have. Yeah. It really, and I'm 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 and I glad. Been fine with the ugly. I'm I'm <laughs> glad I'm glad that it didn't. But you know, you you yeah. you was blessed, so you know God was watching yeah, out was. for you. You know what I'm saying? Because that's because he knew I did it, nothing wrong. It really, really could have went left real quick. You know, so so I'm blessed. I, I'm 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 thankful and blessedful that you you was able to get out of that situation. And they thought that you was a Me guy. Too. Like yeah, because when he came up, he was disrespecting me. But he when he looked at me and realized I had nails and stuff, mm -hmm. he started talking to me differently. But it was already too late. He hadn't already pissed me off, and I didn't trust his intentions no more. Mm. That's what really like made the situation go further than it had to. Okay, okay, all right. Well, that's thankful that everything worked out, man. That uh, that that uh, that you um, that you here, you rocking out for another company. You know, what yeah, was your man, man. what was your after app? You know, in the beginning, you you said you loved you some mm -hmm. Swift in the beginning. But after this whole ordeal, after this whole experience, how do you feel about Swift now? I appreciate them for the opportunity, but they was taking, you know, my life away from me, my joy. I didn't have time to live or be, you know, a wife to my wife because I was, uh, I'm, I'm married. Like I'm just, you know, in the, the, the separation stage going into divorce right now. So, mm -hmm. I didn't have time to be good to my wife or to myself. All I wanted to do when I got done with them every week, because I only had 34 hours literally in town. All I had time for was to give me a drink because they were stressing me out. Like, I lost sight of of my goals and my dreams and my happiness. It turned into a, a job. You know, when a career turns into a job, you need to find something else because that means it's no longer making you happy. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. You gotta, you gotta find, you gotta find your happy spot, and if, uh, and if it's not definitely. there, you gotta, you definitely gotta, you definitely gotta move on. So most definitely. So being in this, being in this industry, being in this trucking game, being a, being a woman of color, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. how, how do you feel, women of color in the trucking industry? Uh, how do you think they are perceived now? Um, they think all black women are just loud mouthed and evil and honestly it's more to us. I mean, everybody had a day. And that's what I want people to understand. We are out here on the road, but we battling with stuff at home and we still trying to be good to everybody else and deliver these loads and make sure everybody else out here is good and everybody at home is situated too. It's a lot of us out here that take care of our whole families like myself and we require some downtime too, and then you know people call us all day dispatching, changing loads, making us get up early, and the, then the the ten hour break. Like it's a lot of underhanded stuff people don't see that goes on. Mm -hmm. We get tired too, mm -hmm. and it's not to say like we are entitled to take our anger out on people. It's just the fact that people never want to understand our side of it. Okay, okay, that's what's up. What do you what? How how do um. How how do the guys treat you at the fuel island when 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 they see uh when they see a five foot nothing female coming up out of the truck? <laughs> um, I get a lot of compliments. Don't get me wrong, I get a lot of compliments. Um, uh, some guys are very um, uh, uh, you know, because some people aren't used to the piercings, or some people feel like I got this little cocky demeanor about myself. But I just be minding my business, trying to get my fuel in. Going about my business, it just be me and my dog, and I man my business. But um, I get I, I get a lot of the you know the little wooing. They be want to be all up over me and stuff, and I be like, no, please don't. Then they get mad about that. Then they want to argue with you, call you bitches, and you know, excuse my language, but they want to call you out your name. Mm -hmm. and I I get the mix match emotions from people. <laughs> I get a lot of love, though, no, for the most part. I get a lot of love. And especially since I went through my little ordeal and I kind of, you know, got my mind right and, and saw that I was a little frustrated out here too. So okay. it's a little, it's a little different out here now. So do you, when you get, all right, one, one last question about, about, about your, uh, about your, about your sexuality. That's fine. When you get married, is 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 the vows the same way as a man and a woman? 
Yes. <laughs> For the most part, yes. Okay, okay. All right, well, that's what's up, man. That is what's up. Well, Val, thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. You know what I'm thank saying? You, thank you. Thank you. For the guys, for you know, for the people that want to know, you know, what, what you got, what you got going on, let them know everything that you got going on. Your social media, your 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 book. Let them know. Well, they can find me at Valencia Carwell on Facebook and on YouTube. V a l e n c i a. C A R W E L L. And um I do have Instagram and, and stuff like that, but I'm rarely on there. So y'all can y'all don't have to listen to me on that stuff. <laughs> Okay, you say you don't, so you have a, you have an Instagram, but you don't mess with Instagram like that, huh? Yeah, I just post every blue moon, so I don't want to let nobody down. <laughs> okay, okay, well, that's what's up. Well, Miss V Carwell, thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Thank All right. you. It was a pleasure. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. It was a blast talking to you. And if you guys like to come on and chop it up with me, you know what to do, man. Hit me up in the Gmail. That's lockoutmen Gmail at no lockoutmen podcast at gmail.com, man. That's what's up. You can hit me up 216-600-2090. Yeah, yeah, 90. Or you can come over to Instagram. I'm on Instagram. I don't have a problem with Instagram. <laughs> but uh, you can come over to Instagram, hit me up there, and uh, and we can get together, man. We'll book a time, We, you know, just like me and uh, me and V did. Uh, before I get up out of here, man, I know we didn't touch on, we, we didn't touch on uh, of, of the pandemic that's going on right now. Um, what, what happened, man? What, what happened? How did you, how, how did you... How did C-19 affect you? Um, I got it from my, my brother. He got it from his job. Um, and when they shut his job down, they didn't go in and clean it up properly. So when he started back working, he gave it to his fiance first. And and then the fiance's mom got it. And then he gave it to our other brother. And now I have it. <laughs> so, oh my yeah. God. so what type what type of symptoms that you that you that what type of symptoms that you that you had to make you realize that uh c c19 was affecting you um it was the uncontrollable nausea diarrhea the bad headaches um the chills and sweats and the, the weakness of your body the aches and pains i've never felt like anything this strong in my life this is the strongest hurt i've ever felt i, I wouldn't even lie to you in i don't words, wish this felt, on my worst nightmare in other words you felt like shit so you you went to the hospital yeah. you you went to the hospital yeah. or you went to urgent care yes all right they they took you in they did the damn thing uh how mm -hmm. long how long did it take them to uh take them to diagnose you and how long did it how long did it take to find out that you was diagnosed with with the virus not long, like thirty minutes. Oh, okay, okay. So they they so they pretty much uh what, did did they give you any did they give you any medicine to take the you know no they just said nothing would help pretty much just try um uh, Tylenol because mine wasn't the worst symptoms they've had but it's the worst I've ever felt. Oh, they got okay. symptoms way worse. Like my aunt has it, and uh, now she can't talk. So. <laughs> Oh my it's, God. It's, it's way worse symptoms where you have to take like antibiotics and stuff like that. So for me, I just really had to take like the, the Tylenol. All right. So how you feel now? Um, man, I just had diarrhea up the wazoo. So I think it's finally like it's it's coming out. It's cleansing itself out. Like so, I'm just I'm uh, I'm a little bit better. I still got the spells of up and down. So. I just gotta wait on it to really be done. And they say that's like up to fourteen days. So, so you so hey, you it so, might feel like it's done for right now and it might not be. So you're you're as of right now, you're self quarantining yourself from everybody, right? Yeah, pretty much. But they people don't stop coming around you in this house. We live in a house. I got a, a house with, with all my family in it, so that's kinda hard. <laughs> Uh, you gotta you, you you gotta make it happen though. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying my best, but you people gotta, still come around. You know, oh, let me get a lighter. Oh, do you got a cigarette? Oh, <laughs> where the cockies at? Like it'd be simple yeah, stuff. Yeah. 
Well, there, I, there I, I tell you, I, I tell you what, if around. you let, if you let, if you let them know, like, yo, C-19, seriously, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, these are the people that already had it. Oh, okay. They already had it. All right. All right. So how, how's your brother, how's your brother feeling? Is he, is he getting back to 100%? How, how's he feeling? And, and well, let me ask you this. Uh, mm -hmm. What was his symptoms? Oh, man, my brother had a, uh, well, man, I really had, like, two little small black eyes. Well, he had the big black eyes from it. And uh, his face, uh, like, changed colors. Like, his skin changed real colors. Like, he looked kind of dead a little bit. Like, oh. he was really sick. Like, he did not look like it. He looked like a corpse. Ew. How how is he, had he it real bad? How is he now? Oh, he's fine. <laughs> I'm the one walking around here looking crazy. He's fine. He's in a clean game right now. Oh, okay. Is he back? Is 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 he back to work or did they what what did the work what what was what, what was the uh what they what they do at work to protect at his work to protect the the workers there against uh C nineteen? Nothing. The same thing they did the first time is the reason why he ended up contracting it. They closed the job because they had a case of it. And then they opened it back up and he ended up getting it. Well, they did nothing. So now they're giving him to run around because he ended up uh, having it. So it's like they don't want him to come back. Yeah, that's wow. Um, are it, it are, is. It, is they is his insurance still on with the company? I mean, he's he's just yeah. taking he's just taking and they time have to off. Pay him. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they have to pay him. Okay. All right. Whoops. That's what's up. That's what's up. I had to give you a round of applause for that, man. And a round of applause to you. Not like that. So thank you so much. All right. So again, y'all, that's uh that's uh Val Cardwell right there. You know, I appreciate her coming on here, talk, chopping it up with me, sharing her experiences. Uh, if you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, and hit that bell for more content like this. I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and this is my girl Val. Before I, before hey, we, hey. before we get up out of here, I want you guys to be safe and really understand. The, the importance of washing your hands and and taking care of yourself out here, man. I mean, Val whole family just came down with it. It, it was one, and it's transferred to everybody. So, you know, when 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 my family talked to me, and they was like, you know, I'm out here, you know, I wear my mask. Uh, because I, I go home every week and I, I, I don't want to bring it. I don't want to bring it home. So if I had to wear my mask out here looking like looking like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde with a mask on, looking like Jason, Freddie, the rest of these boys out here, I got to do what I got to do. Man. All right. On that note, we are gone. Oh, I got somebody else you can uh, interview your service. Okay, well, get, yo, send my information over to him and I'll, I'll get him on. Okay, most definitely. All right, don't, 